Assalamu alaikum. And uh, as I said a few minutes ago, this is our second regional event and organized by the World Vision Organization and uh, with the help with our uh, regional offices. Uh, this regional event is dedicated to Europe, even if I'm based uh, in Dubai and heading a global organization, Europe is always very close to my heart and to my mind. My family-in-law is in Barcelona, my brothers are in Paris, my eldest son is studying in Milano, and my second son is studying in Bristol. So I can never be more linked uh, to Europe. As you have seen, we have a very rich agenda uh, for uh, impressive speakers, three plus one, three impressive speakers that perhaps it will be tough to me to manage the time. They have a lot to say, so I will be somehow controlling the time. Between each speakers, we have a poll questions, and at the end of the presentations, we will have Q&A, &A, so as soon as you have a question that comes to your mind, please write it down, depending on the available time we have. We will uh, select some of them with the commitment that the one that are not answered during this webinar will be answered by email. Also, my commitment to all the registries and the participants that in 24 hours they will receive a copy of all the presentation and a copy of our uh, free zone outlook. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, my colleague Dragon Kostic, for the member of the board of director, the director of free zone pilot and the director of our regional office in Pirot, Serbia to say some words because he's the host of this event and also I would like to thank uh, my colleagues in the free zones of Barcelona, our regional office in Europe, Blanca and Nika concretely for their help uh, to promote this event. Dragon. Yes, welcome from uh, free zone of the Serbia to all free zone family and uh, from all the participants. Uh, thank you for the World Free Zone Organization to organize this uh, webinar. And thank you for my uh, friends, uh, Samir, Juan, and Dr. Bohan for this, uh, this event today. Okay, it is enough for me to okay. start. Thank you so much, uh, Dragon, for these uh, words. So let's start directly by uh, what we are here today for. And uh, I would like to start sharing with you some uh, words of uh, introduction uh, um, on behalf of my organization. Uh, I think all of you know that we are the World Free Zone Organization. We are the association. Uh, speaking on behalf of the free zones, we have uh, almost 3,000 free zones in plus 150 countries. We contribute to the third of the global trade. We employ 60 to 70 million persons and we host 3 million companies. And since the day one, we uh, launched this organization also through the headquarter or through all our 10 regional offices or through our partners and collaboration with multilateral organization, we had only one objective. It is not just to improve your day-to-day -day work and your relationship with your investors, but to anticipate the future and to create resilient free zones. And I will show you by facts how you have been doing it. In our first annual event in Dubai in 2018, we already said there is a need for a new global trade order. We cannot manage today the trade having plus 600 multilateral and bilateral agreement. It is a spaghetti bowl in which countries and regions will be lost. We even said perhaps the new border for the trade can be the free zones. In 2016, the following year, we said the main pillar of the global trade, this new global trade order, are the global value chain. And within this global value chain, the free zones should be playing a key role. 
And that year, we said, let's do an anticipation exercise. And we asked ourselves in 2016, 10th of May, what is the free zone of the future? We went to Cartagena de Indias in Colombia in our third annual event, event and we said how a free zone will look like in 25 years. We defined it, we did the, the, concreted it, but in our event in Dubai in 2018, we said 25 years is a lot. We know now how a free zone of the future will look like in 25 years. Let's do it in two, three years. And not only let's do it in two, three years, let's measure it and let's establish a KPIs for it. This is why we introduce it, uh, uh, an indicator, call it is the HAR indicator, the HAR index, the prosperity index. This free zone of the future, we call it free zone four. And we went to Barcelona and we said, let's prepare ourselves. Let's face this new economy. Let's face these new challenges. And perhaps let's be resilient for any new challenge or big crisis. From the day one, we launched this organization. Our objective was to create support in a short time the create of the launching and the implementation of resilient free zones, bulletproof free zones. So, what, and this is what even we were planning to do in our event in Dubai, who was cancelled, the one, the 6th to the 8th of April, because we reached the conclusion that even if we create a resilient and bulletproof reasons, we will never ever succeed if we work alone. It is a matter of linking all the stakeholders together. And the idea, the value of free zone is not only the financial one and the real estate one. There is much bigger value of the free zone. Let's create it. Okay, so we said the free zone of the future is a free zone four. And this free zone four is the shortest way to face any crisis and to get out of it. What is a free zone for? This is what I'm projecting, and this is my last slide, much more important than what I'm saying will be what my colleague says. A free zone four is one plus three. It's simple, but it's one business excellence and economic contribution, three best in class innovation and sustainability. In the 100 plus 50 countries that have been, that are having free zones, all the free zones were launched and implemented with the same objective, business excellence and economic contribution. It is mandatory, it is a condition sine qua non in a crisis time or a non-crisis time to continue improving the business environment of our zones and continue consequently the business environment and excellence of the country and to continue in any way, in any how, contributing to the local economy by creating and keeping jobs of quality, quality of jobs, improving trade, being the new border of the trade and attracting investors with the new technology. On the top of it, on the top of it, we have to be best in class, innovative and sustainable best in class with crisis or without crisis there is only one way to be agile in the management and in the decision making process we have to be knowledgeable we need to know what is happening we need to know how to solve it and what are all the measures safety and security is a condition sine qua non to sort out the crisis we adopted in September last year the code of conduct of the OECD in order to let's say, face and fight the illicit trade, but safety and security is for people, for money, for goods, and for intellectual property, and for these warehouses that perhaps today we have more than ever to uh, strengthen. Tech ready, it is clear, free zones today should be digital and tech ready in several ones. A free zone is a small city. It should be a smart city. We have to manage in a better way the mobility. We have to manage in a better way our buildings, but we have to be also a smart office. And we have to be having all of us an, on, an online one-stop shop 
we have to be able to create com companies and we have been able to communicate with our tenants, with our customer, with our client through online. This is the only way to banish the current situation. Innovation is a mandatory, is I think one of the ways to sort out of this crisis. It's not only important to attract investors, it's not only important to keep the investors happy and satisfied, the aftercare, what, aftercare, what we usually say. It's mandatory that we link these FDIs, we link these investors to local entrepreneurs. We need to create a cluster surrounding them. This will help them to sort out any crisis, shortage, whatever, in a short time. 85% of the small, 85% of the companies within the free zones are small and medium enterprises. We don't have to think on supporting multinational, multinational they can manage by themselves. We have to take care of these small and medium enterprises, perhaps more small than medium. Sustainability, it is clear, it is clear. We have an opportunity more than ever to be respectful and to be envi uh, environment friendly. We have seen a lot of concerns about jobs. The free zone authority, the free zone company, and the companies have to look for creating jobs of quality and have to look to, look to create a quality of the jobs. Today, every one of us is rushing to find some temporary solution for masks or for helping hospitals. We should mandatory, all of us, anticipate and have a corporate social responsibility program. This is, in our opinion, your organization, the one that have been for the last five years anticipating all the, your needs and looking for building resilient and building, let's say, stakeholder environment, think the shortest way of the, to sort out this crisis. Um, I will stop here. I will ask uh, my colleagues to share with you the first poll question. We will share with you three poll questions. We will ask you to immediately answer to them and we will show you the result. The first poll question is how will COVID-19 impact on your level of revenue? Reduction of 25% reduction of 25 to 35% or more than the third of your revenue. You have one minute to answer to this question and we will show you immediately the result. You see that 37% of you thinks that they will lose more than the quarter, less than the quarter of their revenue till the third of you, uh, till 50%, half of you think that they will lose the third of their revenue and uh, uh, almost the fifth on you will think that they will lose more than the third of their revenue. Thank you and the result of these poll questions and other poll questions will be also shared with you. I am done now with my uh, presentation. I leave the floor to my colleague, Dr. Mohan Kurzwami. He is the Chief Knowledge Officer of the World Fusion Organization. Uh, Mohan, you have 15 minute, minutes and I will be tough with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samir, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, good afternoon to all the webinar participants. Uh, a very warm welcome from World EBSADO. Dr. Samir gave you a good view about the historical perspective of how World Free Zone Organization has evolved in the last six years. And I will be sharing with you about what is the context today and then what is the way forward. So in a way, you heard about past, I'll talk about present and future. The present and future is divided into two. A, I will be focusing on the current scenario and the way forward from a global perspective. And uh, my esteemed and distinguished uh, fellow speakers would focus from a regional perspective. So without uh, wasting much time, let me go ahead and start presenting to you my thoughts on the subject. During the last year of the last decade, 
you know, in 2019, many of the international institutions were very upbeat in their sentiment, in their prediction. They predicted an uptick in growth. But alas, as we all know, unfortunately, as soon as the new decade opened up, right in the month of January, we faced a, a calamity. This has led to a lot of uh, despair, desperation, and we are now amidst a major global health issue. This has led to a lot of uncertainty, a lot of volatility. There is no clarity of what is happening, what will happen. The situation is very complex. Some of the actions taken are uh, embargo on travels, almost half the planet uh, is, is locked down, and all of us are aware of social distancing. Now, such an event has been unprecedented. Possibly the entire humanity is uh, facing such a calamity for the first time of this magnitude. So what is the impact? Yeah. Uh, there is a forced inactivity. Uh, everyone has to sit home, not much movement on travel, on goods. So how does this look at in terms of impacting? I see in three areas mainly impacting from a business or economic perspective. One is overall the global wealth has uh, reduced, depleted to a large extent. The manufacturing global output in terms of both manufacturing and services, almost halted or substantially slowed down. And what's most hit is the international trade. It was already being hit last year and it is further deteriorating. And the, all this results in a weakened consumption. Stock markets are depleting, currency values going down, and if such thing prolongs, it can also have a huge impact on employment. What are the worst affected sectors? As we know, aviation, there's an embargo on travel, flights not taking off, travel tourism, hospitality, manufacturing, and even the value chain, the trade movements, logistics have all had a great hit. Uh, International Monetary Fund, has uh, predicted, rather estimated, that at the end of this, there could be, at a world level, a loss of $9 trillion. Now, assuming that in three to four months, there will be some kind of uh, turnaround recovery, this amount amounts to almost $100 billion of loss per day, estimated at a global scale. Now, this is huge. This is phenomenal in terms of impact. So let me share with you some statistics, some figures on the global wealth, on manufacturing and trade. Uh, our research partners, uh, in collaboration with them, uh, we conduct a whole lot of research activity or knowledge management team. And along with Keele Institute for World Economy, we have seen that the overall economic sentiment, which was seemed to be a beat in 2019, where a lot of experts felt 20 could be much better, but it has dropped globally, almost indicating recession around the corner. Yeah. So secondly, when it comes to the world output in terms of uh, uh, both manufacturing of goods as well as services, the growth was a bit sluggish, and now you see it is going to get hit much more, and the indicators are very clear. But what's uh, more worrying is the overall international trade situation. As we know, the two giant economies of USA and China uh, already were facing some trade tensions, which had initiated a downtrend and looks like this downtrend will continue and 2020 will see a much bigger deceleration because our current pandemic 
has acted as a catalyst on that and will be uh, we will be seeing a very sharp drop in the world trade as a consequence of the last year's trade tension coupled with uh, the pandemic which is affecting us the how does the outlook uh, look in terms of last year this year and next year in terms of uh, 2020 as we said recession looks imminent uh, research shows uh, almost all the regions are going to get affected and particularly we have participants uh, 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 from europe uh, is 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 the region which needs to tighten the belt uh, uh, to a great extent uh, the two economies uh, which could possibly not go in the negative india and china in all these uh, depending on the region either there is a reduction in the rate of increase or there is a negative growth. And uh, these are some of the sentiments or indicators from a global perspective. Now, what about free zones per se? All of you are free zone domain experts. In this context, we have a very uh, uh, excellent initiative. We call it FWEB, which stands for Free Zone World Economic Barometer. This is a survey-based uh, sentiment indicator. We have a few very simple variables. We initiated this a couple of years ago. We have done on a quarterly basis the survey. We ask uh, in three or four areas questions to free zones. Take, for example, uh, uh, revenue generated, number of new companies registered, manpower, import export trade in each of these have things improved have remained the same or have gone down and overall in 2019 when we did the survey the survey also asked them last quarter do you think things improved remained same or came down and in the next quarter do you think they will improve remain same or come down the sentiment was that it is going to improve but what happened all of us know in the month of jan exactly opposite the pandemic struck so this is showing an expected growth last year from majority of the respondents to this sentiment indicator survey and just to study the current environment we did one more survey in the last week of march 75 plus free zones around the world uh, responded to us we asked three pandemic specific questions. Yeah. One, is activity in your zone affected by the economic impact? Do you expect activity in zone to be affected by the virus in the coming months? And the responses were threefold, not really, to some extent, substantially. And the third question was, by what, what channels will activity in your free zone be affected? limitations to, uh, uh, to activity due to measures to contain the virus, laws of business due to drop in demand, production problems due to supply chain and deterioration in the financial environment. And these are the results uh, we got in the end of March, the latest survey. It shows that free zones are already significantly affected and the situation most of them feel would get a little uh, uh, worse than what we saw in the first quarter. So if you see, uh, currently they say almost 32% feel substantially they will get affected. But when we ask the question, do you expect in your free zone to be affected in the coming months, next quarter, three to four months, almost you see 95, 96% of the people saying either to some extent or substantially. So this is an indicator of what's happening. So negative effects materialize through limitations to activity, work from home, a lot of activities cannot be done from home in terms of travel, tourism, hospitality. So and all these can have a ripple effect on other areas of economy. Loss of business due to drop in demand and the other two also seem to have 50 plus percentage of, of, of response. But 
limitations to activity due to measures to contain has been the highest 85% of the people felt that is the channel which is going to affect substantially. All countries have been taking measures. There are some stimulus packages. America has a very huge substantial package announced. The monetary policies are getting fine-tuned where uh, you could get loans uh, more easily at a very low interest rates. Lockdown, embargo, distancing, we have seen. Now, experts, they were asked, what do you think are the possible recovery routes? Uh, is it that in a few weeks, four to six weeks, we'll recover, which is like a V-shaped recovery? We went down, probably we controlled it, things bounced back. Or will it take four to six months instead of weeks? So we come down, there's a plateau at the bottom, and then it takes time, possibly first quarter or second quarter of next year to come back. And what is more worrying is uh, we quickly come back, but if there is a recurrence, scientists say second wave of these pandemics could always be a little more dangerous. Now, these are speculations. In fact, uh, at the end of my talk, uh, Dr. Samir will post to you a second poll question where what you all feel, do you think the recovery will happen in four to six weeks or four to six months or more than six months? You possibly could be prepared with an answer. The fourth uh, possible scenario, it's just a possibility, is we recover, but maybe things plateau because of several socioeconomic political reasons. People may be focusing much more on health, happiness, rather than surely increasing the wealth and economy. So maybe the lifestyle will start changing and there could be a square root kind of uh, uh, recovery. Uh, what are the recommendations from our end? It's not gloom and doom. We can look at uh, even the negative situation from an opportunity perspective. How can free zones uh, make use of this situation and do a few things uh, and look at it as an opportunity to make oneself robust, strong, and as Dr. Samir said, resilient to face the future and recover faster. You can formulate an enterprise-wide risk management strategy. A lot of companies started doing this in 2008 after the financial crisis, all the more now very, very important. We have a number of certifications the last slide of Dr. Samir showed us. We have safe zone a certification. It's based on the authorized economic operator principles of world customs. We have green zone, tech ready innovation. What we say, each of these have a pre-assessment questionnaire, which tells us where do we stand today? And then we provide inputs to improvise the score there is what we call a progressive certification process. This is a good opportune time to review business processes and optimize how can we reduce costs? How can we improve productivity? How can we do whatever operations we are doing more efficiently, become lean and mean, which will result in more robustness and resilience. Also, it needs to be coupled with capability development. We need to uh, uh, develop our people, probably utilize this time through a lot of online uh, capability development programs. Uh, countries are giving stimulus packages, explore these avenues. Uh, we as World F0 would strongly urge you, not only alone, but also along with your free zone associations of your region, please represent your situation to the policymakers, to the government, yeah. and see whether you could get from these regulators and government entities uh, some kind of additional incentives, benefits, and support. Collectively, when represented, could have an impact. But what we are saying, irrespective of whether it is U, V, or W recovery, yeah, we need to be ready for the worst case scenario if something better happens. Uh, it's a bonus for us. So our recommendation at a global level is be future ready. 
there are going to be winners and losers in this game. But if you as a free zone want to be a winner, you need to follow what Dr. Samir said, ensure that your people are developed, your zones are safe certification, your uh, tech ready, you develop the SMEs within, have incubations, services and support if need be, and look at administering green zone, good place to work and socially responsible zones. Dr. Samir has already touched upon this. So this is in a way, the road to recovery is a comprehensive development from sustainability, innovation and best practices perspective, which will have an impact on your business excellence and business contribution. Uh, finally, just uh, let me share with you, we recently published a World Free Zone Outlook. As Dr. Samir said, uh, he will be uh, ensuring that all this reaches all our uh, participants. A very interesting uh, read. Thank you so much for being with us. I would request Dr. Samir uh, to give the poll question, please. Yes, thank you so much, Mohan. Uh, the second poll question is, are you confident in your business model that it is resilient enough to recover from the impact of this crisis in less than six weeks, from six weeks to six months, more than six months? You have one minute to answer. Okay, so one on 10, 11% think that he will recover in less than six weeks, more than a half think that there is a need to up to six months and more than the third. The third exactly mentioned that they need more than six months uh, to recover. So this uh, will perhaps uh, lead me to mention something, but before of this, I would like to thanks uh, to thank Dr. Mohan in two ways. One, for these extremely rich and comprehensive presentation. And again, thank you also for having, uh, let's say, respectful and punctual with the time exactly uh, uh, 15 minutes. Let me also ha I'll highlight one or two element from your presentation. It is extremely important to say that the crisis hit us where we have been weakening. It means it was not a good time for trade. It was not a good time, generally speaking, for free zones. And when you are weak and you are hit by the crisis, perhaps the impact is higher. This is why you see that almost the third of the participants thinks that they need more than six months. And this is why I repeat what Dr. Mohammed uh, Mohan mentioned, my commitment to share with you the presentation and the report but uh, as uh, my colleague Mohan mentioned, this report is mainly based on survey we have done the last week of March, both on the global level and on the zones level. And because we think that we need uh, more time to recover, and we think even I'm pathologically optimistic, we think that we need to reach the worst, I think we need to repeat such kind of survey. We will repeat it end of May, beginning of June, and of course, we will share with you the result of this uh, uh, second survey. I strongly encourage you to put your q and A. I I see several of them. Uh, Mohan, uh, we will share with you some of the questions at the end of this uh, uh, webinar. Get ready to prepare one of these questions, which is, is it the end of the globalization? Uh, okay, I move to the next speaker, uh, Dr. Juan Operti, our friend, uh, Managing Director of Hemision and member of the Board of Directors from the wonderful city of Montevideo in Uruguay. The floor is yours. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's an honor uh, being here and I will, stick for, I will stick to the time. Uh, well, uh, good morning to everyone from Uruguay. Uh, here is pretty early, and well, uh, I will try to share some some reflections on moving forward. I think we have to move forward. This uh, is an opportunity, as Einstein have established. Crisis is the best time to look for opportunities. So I will go straight forward to my presentation. 
uh, well, the way forward road to recovery. Well, we have been in free zone 4.0. The idea was in Dubai to talk in April about the industry 4.0, how it's been, been dealing with the free zones and the this disruption industry, how we will tackle with the free zones. But we have the, this new industry, but this new industry has been raised by COVID. It's a crisis for innovation, adaptation of the our free zones to a new environment. Uh, free zones uh, of the in this new decade for free zero, we can say that is a co-life for the new decade. So we have called it the co-life twenty. Uh, we we will look forward in this new decade free zones. We have to look forward as scope free zones uh, for focused developers. The new free zones co life twenty have to be smart free zones with innovations and technology hubs. We have to be sustainable free zones, economical, social, and environmental free zones. These new free zones, Collife 20, has to have the possibility to be scalable and flexible. Has to be innovation cast, has to share with venture and angel capital investors, and look for the work of the future. Uh, we have to look at this topic very closely, which will be the work of the future. It has to be very flexible work, uh, we have seen uh, factories in free zones, how they have adapted uh, from huge garments, uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fashion garments to textile uh, garments. We have seen new developments in 3D, 3D printings. So we have to think about flexibility, flexibility, and flexibility. And we have seen huge innovation in these moments in free zones being developed by the COVID. So COVID has bring out co-life and we have called this Co-Life 20. And first of all, we have to think more than ever about safe. Uh, so I think free zones will be the safest place uh, to work for our people and to develop the project. So this will be the five pillars we think about will be uh, the new roadmap for free zone 4.0 in the, in the way to recovery and the, the way forward. A same thing has established uh, do not pretend that things will change if we always do the same. So the crisis is the base blessing that can happen to people and countries because the crisis brings progress, creativity is born from the distress as the day is born from the dark night. It is in the crisis that invasion, discoveries and large strategies are born. Whoever overcome crisis outdoes himself without being overcome. So crisis are, are a perfect trigger to overcome uh, innovation, to develop uh, imaginity and first and most of all also to rethink our you know our way of doing things so for sure it's the way forward and road to recovery uh, so free zones we look at them as the future integrators and facilitators of global value as sample chain as mr mohan has established so the things will become as many world uh, this pandemic COVID-19 has established a more integrated world working all together to overcome it. So for sure, uh, the world will be a new world and will be a made in the world working all together with a new imagination, a new uh, looking forward, uh, you know, for products and services. And the perfect side to develop that will be the free zones. Let's look at some sustainable new, uh, the case of Nutella. Nutella, for example, in Turkey, at some time has to stop to look forward for their hazelnut, another source of a um, source of um, of origin of their hazelnut. So they have looked, for example, in Chile, and in Chile they have found a new a source of origin of their hazelnut. And for example, in Antwerp they have their a warehouse of a hazelnuts. A, so like that, they have integrated a few a full. A stock and inventory of hazelnuts in order not to not to have any disruption in their global value chain. So this is the case we're looking forward. No, the new global uh, free zones will be the perfect uh, re re engineering of the new generation of supply chains. And let's see how the consumer electronic chimneys will be impacted in the first quarter of 2020. And this will show us that how COVID has impacted. You know. Uh, especially in the manufacturing and uh, we see 
in, for example, in, in the monitors, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the game consoles, in smartphones, in, uh, in, in audio, in laptops and smartwatches. And for sure, it has been a, a full impact in manufacturing, and this is reflected in the disruption of consumption. So we have to look, you know, a fight critical uh, relocation uh, of the manufacturing sites. And for sure, the relocation perfect sites will be the free zones, especially as the safe place to relocate uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, logistics, and service uh, um, business platforms. Um, the five critical risk together in China from COVID-19 uh, will be the disruption and collapse of supply chain and logistics. Uh, Dan and Bradstreet uh, say that uh, more uh, and then a Samsung company has a tier one or tier two supplier impacted in China by COVID-19. Also the economic recession in 2019, you US manufacturing lost 20% of its product output and 15% of its workforce. Also the cybersecurity vulnerability, uh, the risk to the manufacturer are more, are more significant since now many sensitive uh, functions are now performed offline, uh, home office, this uh, the, all, uh, the, the system can, can be hacked as we are working uh, offline. Also, we have liability and infringement in patent violation. Uh, we, he, we see, for example, and this is pretty important, we see, for example, uh, the case of medical devices that due to the pandemic and lack of inventory, the restructuring of a certain uh, companies like car manufacturing, uh, manufacturing right now respirators, and in the near future, that car manufacturers can manufacture that respirator. And well, the uh, original uh, respirator uh, manufacturer can uh, lose part of its know-how. Uh, and that's a, a topic in, in after the pandemic uh, crisis is over, uh, can be an issue. Also, a generalized illness of work, manufacturers who, who, who aim uh, who can who can maintain on-site operation during the outbreak can mitigate the impact on their bottom line, but can pose a zero risk to to the health and safety of the workers. Uh, it's an issue to keep our workers uh, on 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 the floor, you know, and you know, and not to 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 to, to not after eight hour shift not to break any of the strict rules we have to keep them uh, on the covid uh, safe safe and secure uh, work uh, working uh, strict uh, rules and this is the short process timeline and impact in free zones and here's just to leave you in the presentation uh, that in 2008 we have the subprime crisis uh, which make a site for localized options uh, provided by OEM or service of better qualities and cost effective. Uh, and we saw emergence of new destinations uh, with high potentials as Southern and Eastern Europe, Latam and China. And in 2008, the subprime crisis made uh, global companies to relocate their uh, operations uh, offshore. And we see in COVID in 2020, uh, the localized option the relocation of corporation for risk mitigation and diversification. So uh, for sure, it will be a, a revaluation of the companies to relocate their, their, their uh, actual uh, sites of manufacturing, logistics, and global services delivery in other safe locations. And their free zones, first of all, they will be evaluate countries as a partner of choice, and then if they have free zones after partner also of choice in that country to uh, locate manufacturing, logistics, or global services as a delivery center. And the global value chain, this is the concept where we have a supplier, a manufacturer, a distribution center, and offshoring 3PL and 4PL, and then a retail, a uh, reverse logistics uh, issue. And the global value chain definition here, we would like to share it with you in the presentation for later on for habit. But the global value chain is important always to be linked to what? To a global supply chain. So global value chain is valuable if we have a global supply chain, that global value chain works together with a global supply chain. And global value chains and global supply chains, where you can find it together? Inside the fence of a free zone. 
So free zones give you a one-stop shop, as Mr. Samir was sta were stating, in, 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 in a country, in free zones, working together. Inside the same fence, outside the fence, but also with the international organization, at the uh, World Custom Organization, uh, uh, United Nations, OEC, OECD, etc. that guarantee you that inside the fence happens the safe way to deliver your products, services, and logistics. In the free zones, Co Life 20, we will have the option to have that one stop shop. We will have the 3PL, the BPO, the supply chain management, the knowledge process of shoring, and the project management shoring. So, free zones will be, the, the, as we have stated, the partner of choice to relocalize or relocation of our operations, manufacturing, logistics, or global services. This is the business platform that in the near future we will be see establishing in our free zone for the way forward and the road to the recovery, working all together synergically. Value added manufacturing, supply chain, uh, information technology of shoring, business process of shoring, and knowledge process of shoring, but they will have to be business platform, very flexible, very adaptable, that together perhaps they will be farm manufacturing, textile medics, medical, uh, tomorrow will be for manufacturing after the pandemic is over, fashionable textiles again, but they have to be very flexible to which kind uh, of uh, manufacturing activity they will be uh, doing according to the situation of the marketing. Also, this is applicable for the logistics and this is applicable also for the global services delivery. And so, agile supply chain in free zones Moving forward, we have to think about the free zones 4.0, but the free zone 0.0 inside the fence has to be in stretch collaboration outside the fence with the inbound logistics, unbound logistics, and a speed to market uh, and a value added logistics. And a speed to market is a key issue because together we have the eruption of the free of the e-commerce as the, also the new winner of this uh, pandemic. Uh, we are all buying uh, goods through the deliveries through the e-commerce as we are home uh, working or home office. So we will see a new reality in the disruption of the new supply chain. So we have to think the free zone 4.0 inside the fence, but also working very uh, stretchily with the outside the fence. So uh, this is the scheme we want to share between the collaboration inside the fence and outside the fence. Juan, you have yeah. three minutes. Okay, so this is the last concept we want to share that we think about the, about the special economic zones or free zones, a goodie bag, you know, as we see the free zones, developers and users, the technology park, university and academic as blending education, and this is the goodie bag. So we see them as goodie free zones. And this is the last concept I want to share. So we have here, as you can see, the technology park, the free zone and the university. And this is a real case in Uruguay where we have a synergically a collaboration between the technology park, the university, and the, this is a life science free zone, and this is the winning card of the future. So this disruption has taken us to have this good free zone collaboration with a agile supply chain, chain with a, a container terminal with the airport, Facility state of the art fulfillment center for e commerce, pharma hubs in free zones, agile and logistics agile, agile 4.0 for testing, teaching, 3 d hubs, and this is the labor profile in free zones. So we have this the way forward road to recovery. Take a look just at the profile we have in free zones that 50% of the, of the labor inside the free zones are university uh, students. 45% are, um, sorry, 50% are, um, are graduate students from university, 45% are uh, university students, and only 5% are uh, non, uh, 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 without degrees uh, labor. So thank you very much, and we are looking forward for the way uh, forward, the road to recovery. Uh, um, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Juan for your presentation. Yes, thank kind. you, Juan. Thank you very much. It's very difficult for me to uh, select 
from all this rich information what Juan told us, but perhaps uh, uh, I would like to highlight the importance of working with stakeholders and the importance of the establishment of an agile ecosystem. So thank you so much, Juan, for yeah. your presentation. Uh, as I already informed Dr. Mohan, be ready for some questions. And one question I would like you to prepare the answer is, you mentioned one of our participants are uh, saying that you spoke about uh, re-evaluation, relocation. There will be a lot of movement in the manufacturing localization. How should we prepare it as a zone, a free zone, industrial park? How should we pre prepare it to invite and to host this new relocation? I uh, will ask my colleague Sajan to enjoy your mate. Ah, sorry, this is Mate from Uruguay. <laughs> Enjoy it. I will ask my colleague Sajin to share with us the third and the last quick poll question. The third one, which be your priority change in the way of working going forward? Invest more in the well-being of your employees, ensure better the safety of your productive assets, implement new communication tools to work remotely. One minute to answer the questions. Okay, we see that a quarter think that we have to invest more in the well-being of the, your employees. The third, uh, more than the third, ensure better the safety of your productive asset and uh, almost 40% implement new communication tools to work remotely. Thank you so much for all of you who have participated. I insist that at the end, because I have seen several requests in the q and I insist that at the end of uh, uh, 24 hours after the end of this webinar, you will receive a thank you email in which we will attach the PowerPoint presentation of the three of the four speakers, and we will uh, uh, send you also our Frizun Outlook report. Uh, we cannot wait more to hear Dr. Dragon Kostics to give us the perspective of the region. As the other speakers, Dr. Dragon, my friend and brother, you have 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My presentation, I will give you information about uh, uh, West Bank of Reasons and the uh, impact of COVID-19. Western Bank region, you know that uh, how many countries here, Turkey, part of uh, Europe is here. 39 free zones in Western Balkan, Serbian free zones, you can see 15 free zones in the Serbia with many companies. Now we have uh, the Romanian free zones, Romanian seven in this region, Macedonian, North Macedonian, of course, 15. Turkey, 17. This part of Europe is the part of Bal Balkan, Western Balkan Peninsula also. Bulgarian free zone, they have 18 industrial parks uh, and six free zones in Bulgaria. Greece have three, four now. Croatian free zones, 11. Bosnia Herzegovina, three free zones in Bosnia. Albania. Three, Montenegro have two important bar and one in Podgorica. And we know that COVID-19 is coming and uh, all the European and uh, company, all of the world company have government measure to respond to this pandemic crisis. There is almost uh, uh, the, the measures is support taxpayers, many measures from uh, cutting the taxes. What economic measures in the business cash flow to enhance tax filters, you know, the delay tax payment, flexible state, and many things about taxes. Tax policy measures, many of them, tax liberalization, reduction of business tax rate, taxes, non-taxes, non-tax measures, you can see loans, wage subsidy, 
and uh, delay noise business cost. And uh, subsidies of noise business costs, subsidies for self-employment, delay of dividend, and support uh, some specific sectors. Measure to support investment in tax also, rate reduction, measure to stimulate employment, reduce tax rate for bonuses, and we have also Serbia economic response to COVID-19. We have Serbian economic measures. Uh, is working now. Now start working. It is uh, for this uh, uh, postponing payment of payroll taxes and social security contribution uh, for last two three months. It is value 1.4 billion euro. Uh, Loan for uh, uh, liquidity and working capital for companies. 2.2 billion euro. Payment for the advance and corporate income tax and uh, donation for contribute are exempt from VAT payment obligation. The state will pay around uh, uh, sell, sell almost 1,800 uh, euro for each employment. What uh, is happening? Many of these uh, uh, country give tax uh, uh, reduction like it is the all the countries result. What is the projection of this epidemic? We can see some some uh, some uh, uh, projection from Boston for Slavic group, and it will be ready for all period. We have in the Brazil, France, to August, second, uh, second week of August, France, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, June, uh, we have a, a period for uh, uh, this uh, lockdown uh, two months now. The COVID impact of free zone, free zone period case is uh, starting uh, letdown. First week, week, it is normal business. Second week, we have 10% for production company. And uh, uh, running late uh, is uh, the logistic and services. Third week, we have 50% five, uh, of production is stopping services. Also, uh, logistic is still alive. Uh, fourth week, we have logistic uh, 40%, 80% production. All the com company for production phase of period is top is working. And now we have 90% from production and logistic is in the 60%, services is 80%. Uh, we have a, a big impact of production and services. Logistic is still alive. Uh, during the times of this crisis, state give tax benefit like the whole state is free zone. What now we do with uh, free zones? We should offer to uh, something to further, further to facilitate uh, the business of our tenants. We must organize three things, health safe free zones, economic safe free zones, and human safe free zones. From healthy free zones, Every, everyone know health, hygiene, or employment, or tenants, uh, <coughs> restriction of business trips, work from home, and measures on logistic terminal. I think it is very important these measures for logistic terminal, and we have organized uh, in the freeze on period uh, the truck drivers I put protective masks and gloves. They must wear it all the time in the freeze on. We give, we give uh, uh, mask and gloves to all truck drivers in the entrance of the free zone. Of course, custom terminal disinfection with uh, chlorine, measures in the workspace, many measures in the workspace, disinfection of shoes, disinfection of workspace, and 
Second, economic safety zones. The legal payment of rent for our tenants. I think it is very important. Uh, and the legal advancement of debt. We uh, now have a special measure for our customers to uh, save his, uh, his work in the free zone in the future. And human safety zones, we organize one platform for donors with the uh, regional chamber of commerce period. And we uh, uh, organize almost um, 15 company who organize a donation for uh, all he needs. Uh, I think also it's very important post-crisis me post measures and reasons. Measure to support the recovery of tenant business. New measures to attract new investments. Implement a low price policy for tenants. A diversifying supply chain. So, so supply chain and logistics uh, is still alive in this own period, but we're preparing now what will happen in next six weeks. No, if in normal business you, you, you see what is happening with Christmas development, but uh, the main company of this zone is uh, uh, preparing to organize his work in first of May. Uh, fourth of May, we start in production. We have this announcement of, of them. And I think crisis recovery from free zone period tenants in 20 weeks will be in the same position uh, like in the starting of crisis. I think the recovery can come, come quickly, but it is the case of free zone period. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dragan, your voice is the voice of the experience, your voice is the voice of the day-to-day -day work, and your voice and your words are the words of the reality of, uh, of today. So, uh, again, thank you all to our speakers. Uh, we are left just with five minutes, uh, so I have the, I'm so sorry, uh, I need to select some of the question. My commitment to whoever have put a question, we have several of them, is to answer you by email all your questions. So the first question from the audience is to Dr. Mohan. Is this the end of the globalization? Uh, very interesting uh, question. Uh, uh, in many forums, this is getting discussed. Uh, what is uh, happening in most countries, uh, the government has uh, some local socio-political obligations, and they also have, in an international forum, some global obligations. And when they try to start balancing, in some cases, it seems to be tilting towards uh, nationalization. But uh, my feeling is, uh, Possibly there could be a middle of the path where uh, there could be more regionalization rather than 100% localizing of everything. There is an in-between way within a region, possibly there could be much more transactions, value additions, uh, 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 you know, logistics, movements, etc. This is one thought as I could respond. Dr. Samir? Thank you so much. I think it's... Uh... Uh, a clear answer. I said that we have a few minutes. Uh, Juan, what about this question related to uh, relocation, manufacturing at home? Uh, how should we prepare it to, uh, to such well, kind of movement? Well, first of all, we have uh, to consider uh, four pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, the country to present as a whole the, the country the, in the doing business as a partner of choice. Uh, we have to present the legal framework, the legal framework with a key issue. Also, the compliance with the highest standard established by the OECD, you know, the know your customers, for example, uh, all referring uh, to, the, to the, uh, the country as a, as a localized option, as we say, mm -hmm. in this case. We have to consider the country in, in its, in, 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 to be a safe country, but a safe country in, as to be located the company in, 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 in that country. 
in, in a place where there's no laundry, where will be no terrorism, where there will be no, no, no issue about that. After that, infrastructure. That's a key issue. Uh, speed to market, agile, flexible infrastructure, a multimodal infrastructure that can interact, you know, in global, in global, in, glo in a global manner. Then the inside the fence, the free zone. The free zone where we have the developer interacting with the user's company inside the, in, inside the fence and also outside the fence. Today, the investments evaluate not only the country, but evaluates how the country can have capability to innovate. So it will evaluate the university, it will evaluate the technology park. So the perfect blending will be innovation hubs, free zones, legal framework, infrastructure, and safe country considering as a OECD compliance standards. Okay, thank you so much. I will uh, answer the question of Emil Yankov, who asked uh, about the European Green Deal and the UNIDO Green Park. Uh, if you have, if you remember, Emil, we have said that within this free zone four, one of the key nine pillar is zones friendly with the environment. Yes, this is. I read the European Green Deal. I'm aware about the UNIDO Green Park. These are great initiative. Um, perhaps humbly speaking, come and test whatever we have prepared in our Green Zone certification. It's easy, it's uh, uh, approachable, and it will help you to be within this European Green Deal and you need a, uh, let's say, Green Park. Uh, a last question, and here, when I say this is a European webinar, I have to say that we went beyond Europe and have to welcome friends from India, I have to welcome friends from, uh, from Argentina like uh, Lisandro and some brothers from uh, uh, Nigeria. So uh, my colleague uh, Emeka from Nigeria asked somehow um, a critical question. I would like to start with uh, Dragon Caustics. Okay, with what... Uh, uh, Juan is saying that now we look for relocation, we look for to attract industries and manufacturing to our uh, countries. Uh, knowing that some of the free zones are big medical hub and we had some trouble of this medical uh, hubs. So uh, do you think the image of free zones as a place in which big multinational are producing and after with what you said um, uh, Juan relocation are we eroding the image of free zones or really it's an opportunity I will start with Dragon please is it a damage to the image of free zone or uh, Dr. Dragon you think this is an opportunity uh, I don't think so because um, uh, we have now one plan for recovery of uh, business for our uh, our customers and all these days in crisis we, we are in the free zone every every moment and uh, try to help to our tenants uh, maximum what is it also is our help of course mm -hmm. uh, we must give to support uh, to, to them uh, with, with uh, all things we can uh, organize that. But I think you saw that it is uh, a very uh, big impact of services is our, our problem now. We must uh, develop some of services for this moment of crisis from uh, in a new way. We will see what we prepare in one plan for this and we will see what, what happens. Okay, okay. Uh, Juan? Any thought about this question? No, I think uh, for sure free zones, special economic zones are the perfect size for as a localized option for international corporations to make a plug and play as a quick startup of their operations and recuperations of global value chain and supply chains. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want to make a quick startup, you know, inside the fence, the free zones around the world are today the safest place to establish themselves. You know, we are controlled by the OCD, we are controlled by the local, um, the local authorities. There's no more controlled places in the world than the free zones. They are mm -hmm. also, you know, they have the, 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 the state-of-the-art infrastructures in telecommunications, in, in logistics, in referring. They're a site for innovation. What we also are right now improving a lot of the free zones is 
the relationship outside the cells with the academy, the, with the technology part. So we are a good free zones between that interaction. Free zones are already working inside the fence, outside the fence. So it's a perfect site together to establish in a quick start up, plug and play the uh, international new generation of investments. So for sure, our free zones are ready to cap to cap uh, that a uh, new uh, new wave of investments. Mohan, please. Thank you, Juan. Uh, interesting uh, question. Actually, I tend to agree. Definitely, the position of free zones uh, is threatened. But the way out of this is uh, the free zones have to innovatively rethink their value proposition. Uh, business models will change. Life is not going to be the same. So we can't do what we were doing last 20 years and be successful in future. This is not only for free zones, even for domestic tariff area. So first thing is, I think free zone need to sit, think innovatively, how am I adding value currently? This is why, uh, doctor, your thought of this whole conference of value creation becomes so significant. We need to redefine our value proposition. This is what I'm giving currently, but in the revised scenario, if free zones are able to adapt to this revised business model and a changed uh, definition of value proposition, then the survival becomes easier and the growth becomes faster. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for this uh, question. I'm really so sorry. There are plenty of questions. Some of colleagues asked about uh, more information about the free zone four, and I will add to my commitment to send you the PowerPoint presentation of the speaker, the report will send you a brief about what is the free zone of the future. We have several questions about business to business uh, and business to business platform. The organization is working on building a, free, a business to business platform for the company exclusively for the company within the, within the zones. We are working on the platform and we are signing several MOUs, one of the MOU most important one we are planning to sign is with the union post this is an agency of the united nation um, having together all the post office of the world i think there are more than 600,000 post office in the world and this will help us in our business to business uh, uh, platform my colleague sharif from uh, the world bank is asking uh, what is the current situation of the private zones or the privately managed zone in the case of, let's say, uh, reducing rent or whatever. I think, uh, Sharif, uh, when you have a look again to the presentation of Dr. Dragon Caustics and the model they have established it in, uh, in, uh, in Pirot in Serbia, you will have a clear example of how private zones and private managed zones are dealing with the current situation. Okay, thank you so, so much. We don't have more time. We said 75 minutes. It is already 80 minutes of this live webinar. I would like to share with you at the end a very, very great news. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we are obliged to cancel our event six and eight of uh, April Dubai, but I have great news. 30 of April, what Ever we are planning to do in Dubai during three days. You will have it the 30th of April, the same title, value creation and free zone. I insist zones are not just matter of income. Zones are not matter of square meter and number of clients. There is a value that we have to create. There is behind it environment, quality of jobs, social responsibility. What is the value of this, the new free zones? We cannot work together if you want to create a resilient free zone, if we don't work with our stakeholders, 38 online video discussion of all the topics related to this um, uh, situation, three keynote speaks, 20 interview, five panels, five presentation. Uh, this is uh, all what you is expecting you and waiting for you on the 30th of April. The registration is for free. You just have to fill a form to hear from Dr. Mohammed Zarauni, our chairman, Dr. Mukisha from Anktat, Dorothy from International Center. I will not uh, uh, mention all the speakers today in your email and tomorrow in your uh, with the 
with the documents we will send you, you will receive uh, to, uh, to receive the detailed program. We reached the end of uh, this uh, uh, webinar. I would like first to thank our speakers, Dr. Dragan, not only being a speaker, being the host, all your teams, the Alexanders, the, the Vladen, the Alexander, all your team that worked really, really very hard to make this, this uh, webinar successful with the support of our free zone uh, in Barcelona, our regional office in, in Barcelona. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Blanca, Nika and Jorge for your support. Uh, Dr. Mohan. Uh, and Dr. Uh, uh, Juan, thank you also for your participation. Uh, I would like to finish with some optimistic word. Uh, there is no more optimism than a coincidence. And by coincidence, today in Barcelona, in my lovely Catalonia, we celebrate the San Jordi feast. The San Jordi feast is the book feast in which people, friends and lovers give each other a rose and a book. I think there is a floor for optimism. I would like to conclude with the best ever beautiful feeling on earth. Gratitude, please be grateful, be aware, be awake. We should not have the same thing again. Thank you so much and see you on April 30. Bye.